Hey guys, what's up? By Sactatron here from One Half Gazette, here with my next defensive video, and it is time. This strategy has gone on too long, undefended, um, and I really haven't seen a whole lot of counters for it, but um, the people at Genesis have been working hard on bases, especially at Town Hall 9, to defend against the HG, HB strategy, and uh, I've seen some great bases. This is just one of the, the few that I've seen, and big shout out to Puffer Joe, for letting me show his base, it was uh, it was back from the uh, what the Holder Clashers War a few wars ago. So I, I held on to this base because uh, he let me use it, and I want to show it as an example. Um, and we'll talk about kind of how you set up a base uh, to defend against HGHB at Town Hall Nine, and kind of what this base is doing. So we'll get to all of that. A lot of stuff to go over, but um, let's just get right to it. And I wish they attacked this base with HGHB uh, in the war because I'm sure it would have defended very nicely, but they didn't. They used uh, Valks on this, and after three attacks, they got the three star. So it did very well in the war, um, and I think they identified it as a base that would be very difficult to three star with HGHB. Um, so that goes to uh, show that this base is pretty serious. It's a good base. And um, it's even good against Valks and other stuff. So I'm not saying to copy it. I'm just saying uh, this is the kind of base that you want to build. Something similar to this. Obviously, any Town Hall 9 base can be three-starred, but uh, that's beside the point. So anyway, um, in general, uh, when you're defending against HGHB, which is, you know, Hog, Giant, Healer, Bowler, that combination, you can check out my attack strategy. I'll try to link it in the description if I remember, if you want to learn the uh, attack strategy, if you haven't seen that yet. But um, for defensive wise, the two things are going to be kind of the compartment, the, the compartment setup of the base and um, the air defense placement. Because something that's weird with HGHB that you don't see with other attack strategies is that it can, it doesn't have to move through the base quickly. And the power of it is how slowly it moves through a base. You don't see people bringing a lot of jump spells and stuff because when the troops go slowly and stack up against walls. That's when the splash heal occurs and everything gets healed back to full health. So when you're looking at a, building a base, you don't want to have a lot of you know easy compartments the giants will get clumped up on because when the troops all stay together, you don't want that to happen. That's just going to hurt you. The healers will do all that splash heal and your defenses won't be strong enough to take anything down. So the first thing is you want an open base like this one. There's a lot of room for everything to drift around, has these big wide open compartments, um, that's the first thing you want to look to do. Um, and then the, the, if there's two main things, that's what I'm going to talk about. There's a bunch of little stuff we'll go over, but the two main things uh, are, are that and also uh, your air defense placement. Because having these little air defense islands is so huge because the healers are really what will hurt you. Um, like I said, the healers doing that splash heal on all of the 10, 12 giants, on the bowlers, the king, the queen... Uh, everything being healed, especially when the healers get under rage, that's so powerful and it's so hard for your point defense to take it out, whether you're a max Town Hall 9 or not. So having these little air defense islands is a good way to shoot down those healers because as they enter the base, um, the only thing that can hit these air defenses are the queen. And there's not much you can do about that, it's just a fact. The queen can snipe air defenses uh, and there's not a, any kind of place you can put them to hide from her. But the odds are she's not going to lock onto that immediately, especially with the gap around it. It's not the first building she's going to get close to. So the, the idea is that these can take out one or two healers before they go down to the queen. And uh, if the guy doesn't funnel the queen in properly, uh, then they could take out all the healers because the bowlers can't reach it, a wizard can't reach it, uh, the giants probably won't beat on the wall, they'll probably go to the side to other defenses. Um, and the hogs probably won't get that deep into the base. So these are really, besides the queen, nothing is going to take out these air defenses unless you get unlucky. So uh, that's that's part of the power of this base is that it's going to shoot down healers really effectively uh, because the giants will go, go off to the side, the healers will step up to heal them, and uh, they'll be in range of the air defense, which should be able to take out, if you're lucky, like two, even three healers, uh, which will really cripple the attack. Because uh, the healers are what's so powerful, and uh, these air defense islands are huge against that. So anyway, uh, those are the two main things. Having an open base where things aren't going to stack on a wall, they're just going to kind of walk around. You can see uh, this base, the giants are just going to flow one way. Hopefully the bowlers will go a different way. If things spread out, that's to your advantage. So keep that in mind uh, for, the, for the base building. Um, 
check out also the uh, spring trap locations just in nice little simple places especially in the queen compartment we haven't seen that in a while because people love keeping their traps separate from their queen which was you know made sense for a long time because how of how people did a kill squad to take out the queen then use troops on the rest of the base but people are attacking at your queen with hghb 95 percent of the time especially when your king's there too so having those two spring traps isn't a lot but it can actually take out six giants and that's huge six giants is probably going to be a solid half of what the, the number of giants they're bringing and uh spring traps are actually very uh strong against giants because they can uh, throw three of them off the map, which is quite a few. So um, have those spring traps by your queen. Also, just other basic locations between defenses, not too deep inside the base, but I like in case the giants get into the Tesla farm, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, the spring traps there to uh, kind of break up any kind of group of giants that gets in there. But besides that, just around the base and uh, looks pretty good to me. Uh, but the main thing is in that queen compartment, that's your best chance to get a group of giants uh, when they're not expecting it. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the Tesla farm now. Uh, this is kind of interesting, but you don't want your Teslas just in the basic locations because they'll just go down uh, in the heat of battle to a huge uh, steamroll of troops making their way through. Same with Town Hall 10. You don't want to put them in a place where people are just going to mow right through them and they won't get any value. But they're kind of in a sneaky place in the middle here, especially if the attacker comes from the top. Uh, the troops are going to kind of split around. So uh, by the time the Teslas are, uh, the troops get in range of the Teslas, they're going to be thinned out. And that's when the Teslas are strongest because uh, the healers will most likely be down to those air defenses. So the Teslas won't have to contend with the healers. And they do so much damage that you're your highest damage dealer at Town Hall 9. Uh, they're really in a sneaky place because they are in the middle of the base, but... Uh, they're not going to be, uh, they're probably not going to uh, be, the Giants aren't going to go into that area initially. They're likely going to wrap around the base. So uh, if they come from the bottom, now obviously the Tesla farm will be engaged. But that's why that spring trap is there in case they do. So uh, very good stuff there. I, really, I like the Tesla farm in this space. And uh, that kind of like weird core with just the Teslas actually works very nicely. And you can see if you come from the hero side of the base, the Giants probably won't engage that first. It'll be one of the last things left up on the base, and that's to your advantage. So anyway, uh, moving right along, uh, kind of a smaller thing, but notice the mortars. That's just, um, I'm pretty sure, to dis like distract Giants. It's less places they can drop their Giants, so uh, it's pulling them deeper into the base because a lot of times people are going to drop them in a very specific location to tank for defenses so they can make a cheap funnel. But by doing the mortars on the outside, you kind of dictate where they drop their giants because if they drop them too close, they're just going to go up to the mortars. And uh, if they don't want that, they're going to have to drop them pretty far away. So that just limits their possibilities of where they can drop their giants. And another thing you're forcing them to do. So, uh, you know, make them do stuff. Don't sit back and let them have choices on these kind of attacks. Uh, moving along, the air sweepers. Notice how that one air sweeper right there uh, points out. So... Initially, if they try to drop their giants and the healers, uh, that's crucial because your queen and your king will probably still be up if you have both your heroes in the compartment like this. So in that crucial beginning of the attack, you have all that point defense, like the three point defense uh, plus the mortar, and then you have some skellies, the heroes, all that damage that's immediately coming at those giants, uh, it's going to be amplified because the healers won't be able to heal as effectively, especially with that air sweeper so close pushing them back. And if it's maxed out, that's even better. It'll push them a lot farther. Uh, so it'll either force them to use a rage really early or you'll take out a number of giants before your heroes go down. So that's important there. Um, as far as what to bring in your CC, let's talk about that next. Uh, typically, baby dragon uh, is a good idea or regular dragon because if their queen doesn't lock on and there's no wizards, they can take out giants, healers, bowlers. None of that stuff can target air troops hogs all that stuff so uh this is you want to have some kind of air troop in there because if you get lucky um and the queen doesn't take it out you can basically screw up their whole attack because nothing will ever take out the dragon or the baby dragon and you can fill with like valks you don't want to do any other air troops with the baby dragon so it gets the times two bonus uh, but valks are good they can do some splash damage maybe wizards uh, stuff like that just splash damage to try to take out uh, their big groups of troops because they'll try to they'll try to keep their troops uh, 
uh, grouped up. So anything that does splash damage is a good idea. Baby dragons, regular dragons, uh, Valks, wizards, all that good stuff. Anyway, though, <clears throat> uh, as far as giant bomb placement goes, let's talk about that a little bit. You can see he does have a double giant bomb set, and uh, that'll work against you know a group of bowlers or something too, because uh, the bowlers typically won't be able to survive uh, a double set like that. Um, I think their hit points are around somewhere around a hog, maybe. Maybe a little bit more when they're maxed out. But they don't have a lot, so especially with that wizard tower, they're not going to do very well against that. But um, it's also good for hogs. That's kind of a nice little sneaky spot right there you might not expect. And uh, keep them, you know, towards the outside of the base. They're not going to do much good in the middle. Because uh, if they do drop in, you know, 12, to 10, 12, 14 hogs that you see in the HGHB uh, strategy, having those giant bombs there can really do some damage if they don't have a heal ready. Um, but they don't go that deep into the base when they drop the hogs. So keep them towards the outside so you'll make sure the, the giant bombs are not triggered by, you know, the king or something. They get triggered by uh, the low HP hogs or maybe the bowlers or something, something like that. So keep them towards the outside of the base. And uh, that's pretty much it for all the basic stuff. But one thing I can't stress enough is the, the two rules if you're going to build a base. All the little stuff aside... Um, pathing, make sure your base isn't a typical compartmentalized base that has the core, you know, the surrounding compartments. Make it kind of weird, make it big, make it open. Have these little uh, alleys in the base, these little openings, everything connecting, uh, because that's really going to make the troops spread out, and that's exactly what you want to happen. Spread the troops out. The power for the attacker is when everything stays together and gets the splash heal from the healers. And that goes into the second of the two important things to do. Have those air defense islands, at least one, um, kind of towards the center of your base. Because that way, if you're lucky, uh, the queen won't lock on right away. And the air defenses will shoot down some of the healers because that's the power of the attack. The heal on the troops. Uh, that's the number one thing you want to take out. But anyway, uh, everything else I said in this video is going to help you. Uh, in addition to those two things. So thanks for watching. Uh, it wasn't the most exciting video, but I think it's important that I put this out there uh, so you guys can uh, defend against HGHB at Town Hall 9 because too many people have gone down to this strategy. I uh, had to throw out something to counter it. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. Hope it helps. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sectatron out.